Hegel's Phenomenology of Spirit. Spirit. Reason is spirit when its certainty of being all reality has been raised to truth and it is conscious of itself as its own world and of the world as itself. The coming to be of spirit was indicated in the immediately preceding movement in which the object of consciousness, uh, the pure category, arose to be the notion of reason. In reason as observer, uh, this pure unity of the I and being, of being for itself and being in itself, is determined as the in itself or as being, and the consciousness of reason finds itself. But the truth of observation is rather that it leaves behind it this immediate instinct which merely finds reason, this unconscious existence of reason. The intuited category, the found thing, enters a consciousness as the being for self of the I, which is now aware of itself as the self in objective being. But this determination of the category of being for self, opposed to being in itself, is equally one-sided and is a moment that supersedes itself. The category is therefore determined for consciousness as it is in its universal truth, as a being that is in and for itself. This still abstract determination, uh, which constitutes the matter in hand, itself is at first only spiritual essence and its consci consciousness only a formal knowing of it, uh, which busies itself with all kinds of content of the essence this consciousness as a particular individual is still in fact distinct from substance and either makes arbitrary law or fancies that in simply knowing laws it possesses them in their own absolute nature. Or looked at from the side of substance, this is spiritual essence that is in and for itself, but which is not yet consciousness of itself, but essence that is in and for itself and which is at the same time actual as consciousness and aware of itself, this is spirit. Its spiritual essence has already been designated as ethical substance, but spirit is the actuality of that substance. It is the self of actual consciousness to which it stands opposed, or rather which it opposes to itself as an objective actual world, but a world which has completely lost the meaning for the self of something alien to it, just as the self has completely lost the meaning of a being for self, separated from the world, whether dependent on it or not. Spirit, being the substance and the universal self-identical and abiding essence, is the unruled solid ground and starting point for the action of all, and it is their purpose and goal, the in itself of every self-consciousness expressed in thought. This substance is equally the universal work produced by the action of all, and each as their unity and identity, for it is the being for self, the self-action, as substance spirit is unshaken, righteous self-identity, uh, but as being for self, it is a fragmented being, self-sacrificing and benevolent, in which each accomplices his own work, rends asunder the universal being, and takes from it his own share. Uh, this resolving of the essence into individuals is precisely the moment of the action and the self of all. It is the movement and soul of substance and the resultant universal being, just because it is a being that is resolved in the self. It is not a dead essence, but is actual and alive. Spirit is the self-supporting, absolute real being. All previous shapes of consciousness are abstract forms of it. They result from spirit analysing itself, distinguishing its moments and dwelling for a while with each. This isolating of those moments presupposes spirit itself and subsists therein. In other words, the isolation exists only in spirit, which is a concrete existence. In this isolation, they have the appearance, the appearance of really existing as such, but that they are only moments or vanishing quantities is shown by their advance and retreat 
into their ground and essence. And this essence is just the, this movement and resolution of these moments. Here, where spirit or spirit's reflection into itself is posited, we may briefly recall this aspect of them in our own reflection. They were consciousness, self-consciousness and reason. Spirit, then, is consciousness in general, which embraces sense certainty, perception and the understanding, insofar as in its self-analysis, spirit holds fa fast to the moment of being an objectively existent actuality to itself and ignores the fact that this actuality is its own being for self. If, on the contrary, it holds fast to the other moment of this of the analysis, namely that its object is its own being for self, uh, then it is self-consciousness. But as immediate consciousness of the being that is in and for itself, as unity of consciousness and self-consciousness, spirit is consciousness that has reason. It is consciousness which, as the word has indicates, has the object in a shape which is implicitly determined by reason or by the value of the category, but in such a way that it does not as yet have for consciousness the value of the category. Spirit is that consciousness which we were considering immediately prior to the present stage. Finally, when this reason which spirit has is intuited by spirit as reason that exists or as reason that is actual in spirit and is its world, then spirit exists in its truth. It is spirit, the ethical essence, that has an actual existence. Spirit is the ethical life of a nation, insofar as it is the immediate truth, the individual that is the world. It must advance to the consciousness of what it is immediately, must leave behind it the beauty of ethical life, and by passing through a series of shapes, attain to a knowledge of itself, these shapes, however, are distinguished from the previous ones by the fact that they are real spirits, actualities in the strict meaning of the word, and instead of being shapes, merely of consciousness, are shapes of a world. Uh, the living ethical world is spirit in its truth. When spirit first arrives at an abstract knowledge of its essence, ethical life is uh, submerged in the formal universality of legality of or law, spirit, which henceforth is divided within itself, traces one of its worlds, the realm of culture, in the harsh reality of its objective element, over against the realm, this realm. It traces in the elements of thought the world of belief or faith, the realm of essential being. Both worlds, however, when grasped by spirit, which, after this loss of itself, withdraws into itself when grasped by the notion, are confounded and revolutionized by the insight of the individual and the diffusion of the insight, known as the Enlightenment. And the realm which was divided and expanded into this world and the beyond returns into self-consciousness, which now in the form of morality and grasps itself as the essentiality and essence of the actual self, it no longer places its world and its ground outside of itself, but lets everything fade into itself and as conscious is spirit that is certain of itself. The ethical world, the world which is rent asunder into this world and a beyond, and the moral view of the world are thus the spirits whose process and return into the simple self-consciousness of spirit are now to be developed. The goal and outcome of the process will appear on the scene as the actual self-consciousness of absolute spirit.